So I am going to write a caveat to this, okay? Because this is not always necessarily true. We're going to say in the absence of a net external force and we'll talk about that in a second. The momentum of a system, and we'll talk about that in a second. What do I mean by system? What do I mean by net external force? Is constant. Okay, in other words, in formula form, P initial, what should P initial equal? P final. P final. Whatever momentum you start with should equal the momentum that you end with. Okay? All right, so let's deal a little bit with these caveats here. Um, let's take my pen. Right now, what's the momentum of this pen? Zero. zero. Okay, the momentum of the pen is zero. When I drop it on its way down, what's the momentum of the pen? It's not zero. Okay, right here it's zero. Right before it hits the table, it's not zero. Is momentum conserved? No. no. Okay, if it was, then this would be zero, and this would be zero also. That this is zero, and this is something greater than zero. Okay, so why is it not? Because there is a net external force. What's the net external force here? Gravity. Gravity. So if we're calling the system the pen, the net external force would be gravity pulling it down, right? And so it's definitely accelerating it. So momentum would not be conserved if there is a net external force, all right? Let me show you an example where it would be conserved. Let's take these two cars here, okay? If I have one car traveling this way, it has a momentum, okay? When it collides with the second car, it transfers its momentum to the second car. What should be true about the initial momentum and the final momentum? They should be the same, right? So if this had 100 kilogram meters per second, it transfers it to this car, 100 kilogram meters per second as well. Momentum would be conserved. Now this doesn't mean there is no forces. Are there any forces here between the two cars? Okay, let's not think about friction. We're trying to ignore it at this point. But what's true? Is there a force between the two cars? Definitely. What happens when this car hits this car? What's that called when this pushes on this? That's called a force, right? So this car hits the other car, there's definitely a force. And that's why that car starts to move. That's why it accelerates, right? So that in this case, we would call that an internal force. Because if the system is the two cars, there, is for there are forces involved, there are net forces involved, but those are all internal to the system. And so momentum can be conserved as long as the forces are internal. In fact, going back to this problem, if I call the system the universe, okay, the whole universe is my system, then even in this case, momentum is conserved. All right? And the reason for that is this momentum is zero, right? This is accelerating down this way. But as we know, if the earth is pulling on the pen, what's the pen doing to the earth? Pulling up on the earth. So if you consider the universe the system, this is accelerating this way and the earth is accelerating up towards the pen. And if you were to calculate those, the two would be equal to each other and they would balance out. Okay? Well, we're never going to really get to that level except conceptually, but um, understand that you have to define your system and then know if all forces are internal, then momentum will be conserved, okay? Um, all right, let's do a real simple problem then. Let's do the problem of the cars, okay? So let's take two cars. We'll take one car, let's say they're bumper cars, so we can use larger numbers. Okay, so one car is 500 kilograms. Let's say it's moving this way at 10. We're going to have our second car. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, 800. It's 
say it's moving this way. Okay, how about it's moving at seven? So this would be the before. Again, let's say they're, they're like bumper cars, so they're gonna bounce off just like the example I've been showing you. So this is before the collision. We'll just call this before. Okay, and then we'll make the after over here. And actually I'm running out of space, so I'm just gonna make these smaller. Okay, so let's say the 500. Well, what happened when I collided these two cars? Oh, I have to, actually, I haven't done this, have I? If I collide these cards this way, what's going to happen? We're going to move off in opposite directions, right? So let's say this car is going to move this way at about 6. So this is the 500. And here's the 800. So the question I might ask you is, how fast is the 800 moving? Okay, so that's the question. So again, we're gonna define our system as the two cars. All forces are gonna be internal to the system, okay? So momentum will be conserved. So let's go ahead and do it. So we'll go P initial equals P final. Initial momentum, well, the initial momentum is gonna be the combination of car one plus car two. So we'll call this one car one, we'll call this one car two. that's gonna have to equal the momentum of car one plus car two after the collision. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. Um, so this would be M1V1 plus M2V2, these are all initials, has to equal M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So car one, its momentum is gonna be 500 times 10. So what's the initial momentum of car one? 500 kilogram meters per second. Okay, car two. Now one of the things you have to think about, just like velocity is a vector, momentum is also a vector. So direction is important when dealing with momentum. So if I'm saying this one is 10 meters to the right, this one is seven meters per second to the left. So I am gonna make sure that I give this a negative momentum. So this would be mass of 800 times negative seven. which is what, negative 5,600. Notice if I were to make this positive, what would be going on in this problem? They're traveling in the same direction, yeah. And visually you can see things are different. Like if they're traveling towards each other, that happens. If they're traveling together, that would happen, right? It's gonna be different. So it is important that you understand that there is such thing as a negative momentum and it's directional. So this would be to the left. So this actually has a negative 5,600. So even though individually there's a lot, they each have large momentums, collectively, what's the initial momentum of the system? Negative 600. Yeah, so it's actually a small, initial momentum relative. They each have over 5,000, but together it's, it's only negative 600. Okay?
What's the final momentum? If I asked you what the final momentum of the system is, what would you say? Negative 600. Negative 600. Yeah, negative 600. A lot of times people will phrase the question, they'll say, what is the final momentum of the system? And a lot of people will go through, they'll find the velocities, and then they'll add them up and get the final. But you don't have to do that, right? To find the final, what do you have to find? The initial. Yeah, if you know the initial, then you also know the final. Okay, however, I did ask you to find the velocity, so let's go ahead and do that. So mass one was 500. And again, notice mass one is going to the left. So they won't always tell, they're not going to say that this is negative 6 necessarily. They might just say east and west, or left and right, or forward and backward. You have to recognize that you need to make sure that it has a negative momentum. So that would be negative 6 here. Okay, so that's going to be equal to, what's this, negative 3,000 plus... Car 2's mass was 800, and then we're looking for the V2 of car 2. Okay, good. All right, so this is, what, 2,400? Whoa, did, is it the number that nice? Could it be? So V2 is 3? Yeah. Okay, what was the mass of those two cars on the second part? 500 and 800. The same as the first part. 500 and 800. Okay, so yeah, we get a V2 of 3. Perfect. Any questions on that problem? Pretty straightforward. Um, is energy conserved? Energy is definitely conserved, but let's find out. So in other words, my question is, is E initial equal to E final? Well, what kind of energies are we dealing with here? Mechanical, yes, but more specifically, what kind of energy does this have? Kinetic, this one, this one, this one. It's all kinetics, right? So kinetic, 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 all the way around. So let's find out. So we'll say Ke of car one plus Ke of car two. Does it equal Ke of car one final plus Ke of car two final? Less. One half five hundred times ten squared. Eight hundred times what was it? Notice negative seven. What happens when you square a negative seven? It's positive. Yeah, there's no such thing as negative kinetic energy. Energy is not a vector. Energy is a scalar. So how much do we start with? What's the total energy that we start with over here? How much was the first one? 600? 44,600 joules? Okay, is the final also 44,600? What's the final? How much?
Do we just defy the laws of physics? Okay, so energy is conserved. Yes. However, is mechanical energy conserved? No. No. Okay, mechanical energy is not conserved. Okay? In other words, the initial kinetic does not equal the final kinetic. Okay? Where did it go? Okay, well, went into two main places. One place is, you can hear it, right? So there's some sound energy in that collision. The other place is, well, when this slams into this car, what's going to happen to the speed of the atoms on the two cars? They're going to be going faster, right? What is faster moving atoms? What kind of energy do we call that? Heat or thermal energy, yeah. So we do lose some energy. In fact, how much energy gets lost in the collision? Oh, it's exactly 32? Okay, 32,000 joules got lost in that collision. Okay, good.